The Radeon 5700 XT is the more powerful of two new GPUs that AMD recently released based on the Navi architecture. These Navi cards mark AMD's turn away from HPM memory and into GDDR6, at least for the consumer and GPUs. So spec wise, we have 40 compute units, 64 ROPs, 2560 stream processors, and a base frequency of 1605 megahertz and a max boost of 1905 megahertz. These cards have a TDP of 225 watts according to AMD and the MSRP is around $400. Okay, so let's just roll the gaming benchmarks and then we'll talk about this card after those. So for these gaming benchmarks, I used a 9900K at 5.1 gigahertz, 3200 CL14 memory on the AAZ390 dartboard. So this GPU basically steamrolls all these games at 1080p and even 1440p. And what was kind of surprising was the results between 1080p and 1440p were so close because usually there's like a very clear cut. Okay, this is 1080p, this is 1440p. But these results were really similar on this card anyway. So let's talk about the blower cooler. So right now all these cards have blower coolers. These are the only cards available right now. It's gonna be a few months until the AIB partner cards with the triple and double fan designs are gonna be out. But I have to say that these blower coolers are probably the best ones that I've seen. So if we compare these blower coolers to say the 10 series blower coolers from Nvidia, these blower coolers on the new Navi cards are basically better in every way. The fan's bigger. The, the exhaust out the back is bigger. There's more air pressure actually being exhausted out of the card. These are still blower coolers. You're still gonna be thermally limited on these coolers. And I actually had some issues with this. So basically I put this in the test bench and a few of these games, the drivers would just crash. And it would just be a green screen, have to restart the computer or the test bench. And basically I found that the GPU was just getting too hot, it was becoming unstable and crashing. So I found two ways to get around this. One is just probably the simplest way, raise the fan curve about 15 to 20%. And this does make it louder. And here real quick, I'll put a comparison from the stock fan curve to the 15, 20% raised fan curve that I settled on to make this card stable. The other way I found around this was to do what everybody does with the Vega cards. And that's just to undervolt it and downclock it. And you would think this would result in degradation of performance, but really what ends up happening is the, the card runs cooler. And because of that, the boost can take over and actually keep the card boosted longer. And what I actually saw was that the FPS wasn't really affected. And so this is another way you can get around the, the flakiness of this uh, stock cooler. So the settings I landed on to get this thing stable was 1.087 volts and 1850 megahertz on the GPU core. So at this clock speed, I was able to keep the card stable. Everything was great. And in fact, uh, the frame times, the 1% and 0.1% lows actually seemed a little bit higher, but I can't really confirm that because one benchmark it would be higher the other benchmark it would be lower and a third benchmark it'd be like the same so yeah i would consider them the same with all that being said you could probably guess as far as overclocking these cards yeah there's no headroom on this blower cooler the cooler runs hot and if you actually touch the cooler like if you touch it on the test bench it's actually like almost uncomfortable to touch it gets quite warm and even the back plate actually gets pretty warm on the test bench. And this is on a test bench, it's open air. So in a case, it's gonna get even hotter. 
So what I did find interesting is once I actually undervolted the card, compared to the stock settings, completely stock, everything stock, and once I actually set a frequency in Wattman, the time spy score actually doubled. Is is like if you just benchmark it in time spy, it gets like 4,100. And then as soon as you set any sort of frequency in Wattman, it goes up to like 8,000. And so actually overclocking this, it, it was unstable for gaming, but I was able to get like 9,100 score on time spy. So that's kind of cool, but not very, uh, useful as far as actually gaming goes. So there are power play tables available for this card. Um, I'll put a link down below in the video description and you can check it out for yourself. But the article is in German. It's very, I believe it's by the same guy that did the Vega cards and the Radeon 7 uh, power play edits. And basically it just gives you more frequency to play with and more um, power limit to play with. But from all the issues on the blower cooler, you're not even gonna to wanna to touch those unless you have like a water block or maybe an AIB partner card with a giant heatsink fan. But they do exist, which is kind of really positive for overclocking, so that's really cool. So for $400, this card does kind of compete with the 2060 and the 2070. It has performance really similar to the Radeon 7, at least at 1080p and 1440p. It maybe kind of rivals it at 4K. I can't really tell because we're basically thermal throttling on this blower cooler, which I think is kind of interesting because, you know, it, AMD is basically saying, okay, Radeon 7's dead. Um, but I, I think the Radeon 7 has its own kind of use cases with all the, the high speed memory that it actually has. A lot of video editing people really like that card. So it probably has its own kind of niche. But as far as gaming, I'm pretty sure the Radeon 7 isn't even in the picture because it's nearly double the price. So it just doesn't make any sense anymore. This card is like really refreshing just from all the recent Nvidia launches that are super expensive and has really good performance. And if you wanna get this card, I would probably suggest getting one of these models during on a water block using one of the power play tables that uh, I talked about earlier. And I'm willing to bet that this thing is probably close to like a 1080 Ti, 2080 if you do that. Now, if you're not into water cooling, the AIB partner cards are probably going to perform way better than the blower fan cards, just because it, it's thermally limited. It's a blower. That's just what it does. So if you're not into water cooling, just get one of those. There'll probably be cards like the Radeon 7 with the, with the triple fans. Uh, I would be seriously let down if it, none of the AIB partners had it, like a triple fan card. So this card is like really nice, but just not the blower card. So you're gonna have to like underclock it and undervolt it to actually get it to actually work stably. Thank you for clicking on this video and watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was useful for you. Maybe you learned something about these new cards. And until next time, bye.